On November 22nd, 2019, I released a 13-track project that ran about 37 minutes in time, and it was titled, I Am Error. This project at the time meant so much to me, and even now to this day, and I want to explain the process of how I made it, also the little Easter eggs and snippets that I put all throughout the project, and kind of the overall overarching story of the project. I want to explain all that today in this video right here, so this is me explaining and breaking down my first album, I Am Error. Era. But this is the most powerful thing that I know. Okay. <laughs> Let's just jump into it like Philly D always says. So before actually talking about the project, I want to bring you guys back to 2019 before the album actually came out and kind of the steps I took to get to the album. So in 2019, in the month of February, I released four singles. Those four singles were Jewel, My Town, Let Me Go, and then 30, 30, oh my God, 63rd and Wallace Street, which each single had a different type of music stylings I was doing around then. Also, later in the year before I Am Era came out, I did release the single Summer Rain, which during that time period was my best song. And... Also, requested song. Anytime I was out anywhere and or even just showing people music, they'd be like, play Summer Rain, play Summer Rain. And even to this day, I still get that, which, let it die. Let it die. It was 2019. <laughs> but during the time when Summer Rain came out, I Am Era was close, almost finished in like the production aspect of it. So the fact that Summer Rain did so well actually made me very nervous for releasing I Am Error because there's nothing like Summer Rain on I Am Error. But eventually I Am Error came out and it went pretty well. I want to talk about the actual project. Bef before we break down all the tracks, I do want to talk about the cover of I Am Error. Sorry, I'm pulling up the cover. <laughs> okay, so at first look of the cover of I Am Error, it just looks like normal picture of myself, Knack, holding this teddy bear in a black void of nothingness. But once you take a closer look, there's some really cool parts and little Easter eggs that I put into the cover that you won't notice unless you really look at the cover. So first and foremost, we'll talk about just the look and the colors of the cover, how the reds really pop from the red hair the red contacts, the red eye that Monokuma has. Continuing to look at the cover, this is actually the first time that this style and the signature look of Knack was presented to the audience. And this is actually the Knack, aka the Lonely Ghoul style that I have taken pretty far in my musical career and still even use that style to this day. Also on the cover, there's a signature Knack mask, which is the three teardrops in the sad face, and I've used it for the balloons in the promo of this project and also just future promotions too. I've always kept that mask around. I actually still have it and it's a one of one. It means so much to me and I protect it like crazy. <laughs> Taking a deeper look into the cover, you can notice that Knack is actually being hung. There is a rope around my neck and the rope is actually coming up through the back. Also, the teddy bear, his name is Monokuma. He's from an anime slash video game series called Dang and Dangan Rampa, and he also has a rope. This is to show the similarity between Knack in this project and also Monokuma from his video game series, which Monokuma represents hope and despair. You can't have hope without despair. Same with Knack and the Lonely Ghoul. You can't have his storyline and his success without the failures and similar stuff like that. Okay. Now that we talked about the cover, it's time to get into the juicy part and actually talk about the songs and the core structure of the project itself. We're going to do this by going track by track. I'm going to explain the idea behind the track and also the little Easter eggs within the track and how it kind of comes together all at the end of the track to flow into the next song or to flow into the whole project as a whole. So let's jump into that. Okay, so I did have to write notes for this section because I couldn't just remember <laughs> like every piece that I did. So I did go back, listen to the project and like write down all the key things. So please bear with me on describing this stuff. I've made multiple projects after this and yeah. Okay, so the first track of on, on I... So the first track on I Am Era is titled It's a Secret. This is actually connected to Legends of Zelda in the first NES video game. It's a character that once you meet him, he says, 
It's a Secret to Everybody. That was actually going to be the original title of I Am Error before I got the title of I Am Error. And it was going to be called It's a Secret to Everybody. And the way that was going to be was kind of like any song topic could fit that title. Like if I did a really good like bar for bar type rap song, I could be like, It's a secret to everybody that I can rap this good. Or if I did a song about killing people, it's like, It's a secret to everyone that I kill people. So that was going to be the original title. That's why the intro is still titled It's a Secret. I had that done before I thought of the uh, the actual title, I Am Error. But for the intro itself, that is a connection to Legend of Zelda. Also, you see throughout this project, there's a lot of Zelda connections, especially to the first and second Legend of Zelda. The idea I wanted with that connection is that even though the quality and the production of the project isn't crazy top tier, like amazing production, it's all perfectly sounding, mwah, mwah, everything's on key, ravioli, ravioli, give me the formula. Even though it's not like that, the idea was just like, even in the NES Zelda games, they're not the greatest quality, but there's potential there to grow a fan base and to really start something. So I wanted that to kind of correlate with my music career too. So being the fact that I is my first major project, I wanted to be like, look, it's not top tier quality, but there's hope and passion here to grow into something greater. So as you hear the intro, there's a very slow version of the Clock Town theme song from Legend of Zelda playing in the background. Don't tell Nintendo. I wanted to do that because I think time is also a big part in this project too. Um, you'll hear the Clock Town bells from Majora's Mask also later in the project in one of the last songs of the project you'll hear the bells come back so there's a tie-in with that also just more Zelda tie-ins I love adding Zelda and stuff I'm inspired by tying it into the project I love doing that I do that now with my later projects too everything kind of has little Zelda hints to it from there you hear a voice start talking this is actually Alan Watts this is a speech on love this speech actually continues and finishes at the outro which is on I am error, the outro. Um, so it's really cool, but I used it for the intro to kind of hint towards what the project's going to be about without saying it. If you don't know the speech, you don't know it's about love. So it sounds like the risk and the jump is knack diving into music, which you don't find out until later. It's actually the risk of falling in love and getting hurt again. So that was a cool correlation. And then at the end of the intro, you hear a gunshot and you hear a voice say, are you there? And this voice is actually Mars Argo. Uh, during this time, I was a big fan of Poppy, but Mars Argo was kind of like the original Poppy. So I thought it was a cool little hint and little Easter egg for anyone that can hear it after the gunshot to have her voice in it, the original Poppy. But that is the intro, It's a Secret. So the next track isn't as deep as some of the other ones, but it's a great jumping off point for the first official song off I Am Error, and that's called Whippin. I made Whippin not even with the intent to be on I Am Error. It just happened to fit so perfect and was just such a high energy, let's get this shit started type of song that just ended up fitting so perfect for the project. So Whippin was inspired by kind of like the Scar Lord from back in 2018. 2019. I was a big fan of him and I wanted to do a higher energy kind of screaming song, but couldn't really do screaming vocals. <laughs> it's just a good start off point for the project of like, let's get this shit going. And it's aggressive and it's shit talking, kind of like Knack making his first big jump onto the scene, just kind of appearing and being like, oh, I make this shit now. You know, track number three is Silent. Silent continues the aggressiveness of Whippin, but with more of like a cocky, smooth attitude. This song has inspirations from ASAP Rocky with like some of the deep vocal patterns that he does. I kind of imitated that a little bit with this one. I love using deep vocals. I think it's such a cool dynamic between especially my vocals that sound very high and light. I think using deep vocals is just a great contrast to that. I do want to clarify the hook. I am not saying right around town, listen to that. I'm not saying I'm listening to my own stuff. I'm saying listening to that Mac. It's supposed to be Mac for Mac Miller and B-sides are not like the main songs off the project. It's more like kind of the side pieces. So the idea of the hook is run around town, listen to Mac Miller's B-sides, not Knack B-sides. I'm not listening to my own music when I'm being cocky and aggressive. That's just a little sus. Speaking about being sus, at the end of the song, you hear kind of like an argument snippet. These are actually from my good friends, Tyler and Dan. I'll talk about Dan a little bit later 
in this video because it comes up again. But during the creation of I Am Error, I wanted almost any one of my close friends to be a part of the project somehow, either them doing a feature on the project or them just kind of having some type of <clears throat> some type of snippet or part in the project. So this was this argument that they had when they were over my house one time was just a funny shit talking argument that I thought would fit perfectly at the end of this shit talking who gives a fuck type song. This argument that they have just fits so perfect at the end of Silent, talking about context and how it should be taken. Fuck, dude. The camera keeps turning off. It's really annoying. Track number four off I Am Error is titled Nightmares. This is actually one of my favorite tracks. Lyrically, I love the first verse. I really think I snapped on it when I first wrote it. But again, nothing too crazy. There's just like this ghoulish type talk to it, more demonic than the other two previous tracks. There is a section though where you hear this creepy, ominous voice just like, this is actually from, uh, we, would you call it a viral video? Uh, this viral trend that went around in 2019 slash 2018, and it was about this Momo doll. I thought it was creepy and worth putting the little snippet on it just to kind of give that whole nightmares atmosphere feel to it and texture. Also in the song, when I start talking about snitches, quick snippet of Skinny from the Nines confession plays. It's really hard to hear, but it's a little bit after the Momo doll section. If you listen closely, you can hear it. It's actually the part where he confesses to knowing who did the crime. A little New Jersey diss. A little New Jersey history. If you don't know who Skinny from the Nine is, you can look him up and you can look up his like whole snitch and shit. He's kind of like 6ix9ine did before the 6ix9ine snitch and shit blew up. Fifth track off the project is Dead Inside. Dead Inside does have a music video. I'll be talking about all the music videos we did for I Am Era a little bit later in this video. But Dead Inside is the first hint of Nack's mindset kind of being twisted and broken. The first like big clue of like, hey, something's a little... Gonna lose something there. This is also the first time that Monokuma makes an appearance on the project. He is the teddy, the black and white teddy bear on the cover. This is the first time you hear his voice and kind of hear what the connection and the relationship is between Nak and Monokuma. So that's very cool. Monokuma has also been featured in every future Nak project besides No Nice Words for Ugly. And also I want to tell a little bit of story about recording this song. So during this time that I made this project, I was still living at home and I had like a studio section of the basement that I put up walls in. It kind of was my own area to work on music. So when I was making this song in particular, I knew I had to record the hook with with the screen vocals in the background, but I didn't want to do it when anyone was home because I had to like really get out there in octaves. So what I ended up doing was waiting till a Sunday when my family left to go watch football or some shit. And I remember them saying, bye, we're leaving. And I was like, all right, cool. Let me set up the mic, get everything going. And like five minutes after I thought they left, I started recording the screen vocals just a dead inside. And I'm really going up there. And all I hear is the basement door swing open. My stepdad just run down the stairs and just go, What the fuck? Are you okay? And it was just such a funny moment. Kind of embarrassment of being like, Oh, fuck, you heard that? And I don't know if you guys ever watch behind the scenes like videos of people working on music and doing ad libs. Or even been in the studio with someone doing ad libs. If you can't hear the song, it's very weird. It's very awkward. It's just someone being like, Yeah! Uh, okay, and it's 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 goofy, bro. This camera. The next track off the album is titled "Please Don't." This one was actually written and recorded for a different project that I was gonna do instead of "I Am Error," which was gonna be called "Pray for Knack." It was gonna be mainly this like horrorcore rap style project, probably like six to seven songs. I ended up never doing it. I did have almost all the songs completed, but I just didn't like it that much as a full EP or project. So I ended up scrapping it. But this one I love so much. I love the classic like Eminem slash Hobson style that I did with it. It, so I ended up using it for I'm Error to continue the ghoulish type like style and aesthetic to the project. Also within this track, there is some local New Jersey disses. There's three artists I diss in the second verse. If you're from New Jersey, I might have already shot my shit at you. Just kidding. Don't use that part. But yeah, nothing too deep on this. Just more ghoulish talk and more knack shit talking in the ghoulish aspect. All right, next track is New Jersey Ghoul. This one in the beginning and at the end of the track, you hear the whispers from Friday the 13th. 
13th. I just thought it was a cool aesthetic to kind of like put into it. This is the most like gruesome, violent, hardcore style song on the project and probably that I've ever done. I ended up not really continuing this style, but we'll talk about that later. This project also hints at the idea that Knack, aka the Lonely Ghoul, is only kind of like twisted and killing people for a certain reason. It's not just like clueless killing within the songs. The reason for the long outro was actually because my buddy Dan and I were working on doing drums to this song. I wanted him to have this like almost Travis Barker type feel to the track to where this ending part he would just do a solo. Even after the project came out, I was thinking, oh, for the bonus one year anniversary, we'll release the drum remixes. We just never ended ended up doing it because we either didn't like how some of the drums sounded or couldn't find the time to like perfect it. Also, it's a nice like little break before the tracks get a little bit slower and a little bit more personal and kind of darker in like tone. It was a good like kind of stretch of a minute to like take a step back and still have the track play and be like, okay, let me just kind of slow down from the high energy tracks one before. Okay, the next one is 24 Karat Noose. This is the first song on the project that has like a story type idea to it. Nothing too deep. The first verse kind of is a mirror of the second verse. Um, but I want to talk about the title. My original idea for the title was actually 24 Karat Noose still. But I was going to spell carrot like the vegetable carrot, not carrot as in like a charm or a diamond measurement. And that idea that I wanted to do that came from to show like Nax intelligent with luxury items to show that he's not quite familiar with it. But I ended up not doing that after talking to some of my friends about it because they're like, ah, I don't think people are going to look that deep into it. I think people are just going to see more as you don't know the difference and you're not <laughs> smart enough to know the difference or smart enough to use Google and just search to different types of meanings. So I ended up scrapping that idea and not doing it. In the song, the clock tower bells for Majora's Mask can be heard in the beginning and in the outro. This is a callback to all the Zelda connections that I was talking about before and also the intro that has a slow down clock, clock town theme playing in the background. Yo, this camera, bro. Okay. We'll see how many more times my camera will shut off. So the first verse in 24 Karen News is this up-and-coming rapper critiquing SoundCloud rappers. At the time in 2019, SoundCloud was really big and basically what TikTok is to music, the music industry now, it was like a jump-off point. Everyone was blowing, not everyone, but a lot of people were blowing up from SoundCloud, getting tons of streams, getting deals off of it. So personally, I was a little bit jealous in the time. So I wanted to critique the idea of like the SoundCloud rap scene. So the idea idea is the first verse basically knack just critiquing the soundcloud rap scene and then in the second verse it mirrors the first verse to where it's actually if knack blew up on soundcloud like was a soundcloud artist like how i became this like i'm talking about doing drugs and pain but so like it has like a, a weird like mirror aspect to it in the second verse at the end of this you hear people talking about untalented artists blowing up this is actually from parents react to six nine at the end where the right brothers, not right brothers, react bros, react brothers, I think there are, ask questions to the parents about 6 9 and art and talent. And I thought it was just like a cool way that like, if you think about it after listening to the, after listening to the song, you might think they're talking about Knack with his colored hair and being goofy. And like, if you can get an audience based off just looks and not talents, like great but there's so much importance to having that audience doesn't matter how you get it there's pressure with that and i thought that was a cool way of ending the track at the end of it you do hear a zelda sound effect which flows into the next track okay so the next track off i am error is titled more demons the more is actually spelled the same way as would you call him a celebrity i guess now he is because he has a netflix doc but it's spelled the same way as hunter moore if you don't know who hunter moore is there's an okay documentary out right now on netflix which is titled the most hated man on the internet he's very controversial nowadays he's more on the negative person type side but back then teenagers loved him because of his humor and attitude of just i don't give a fuck dude but I ended up using Hunter Moore's snippet in the beginning and the out just because of the idea of like, ah, oh, it's going to sound so mean to him. But no matter how much of a scumbag you are, there is some human traits in there that you could deal with like loneliness and heartbreak and shit like that. And I wanted to show the connection and correlation to Knack and the Lonely Ghoul character kind of with like the whole like killing aspect of it. That there's also a heart in there and there's also a soul no matter how fucked up of a person they are. There's a music video. Again, I'm going to be talking about the music videos later in this video. 
Yo. And the next track following More Demons is Since You. Now, before I talk about this track, ever since I released this track, even to this day now, I still get made fun of and constantly questioned on who is you? Who is you? When I made this song, I was single. When the song was released, I was in a relationship. And so I constantly got the... Anyway, since you is Nak hinting at his sadness and loneliness with being who he is, aka the lonely ghoul, um, this is where it starts to get a little bit more on the softer side and slower side of the project, where before the project started out with this high energy of like, I don't give a fuck, I'm the shit, I kill people, motherfucker. And then it hits into like the more demons and 24 karat news, and it's kind of like, ah, uh, well. I'm a little bit jealous, and uh, yeah, I have my issues too, but uh, still kind of the shit. And then since you's where that whole ego aspect gets taken out, and it's more like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't always like this, and you know, it sucks. And track number 11 is Soft Lock featuring Jill Anderson. Jill Anderson is a singer back in 2019, 2017, that I worked with a lot, and this song was the first time I wrote something for someone that I wanted them to sing without me singing prior. Before this, it was kind of like stuff I had pre-written. I was like, oh, you want to do like some under like undertones to this hook? Or, hey, do you want to write something here? This could be your part. This is the first time that I wrote the hook out and I was like, hey, these are the lyrics. This is the melody. Can you do it? <laughs> and she did. She did an amazing job. The title from Soft Lock kind of goes with the idea of I am error. The idea of like error being like a computer thing and a technology thing. Soft Lock is also technology a soft lock in a game is where everything freezes so it's kind of like that aspect coming together to make something whole the clip that plays in the beginning of soft lock is actually me this time that i drove home drunk don't drive drunk get an uber but this one time I did, and I was filming some of it, I was driving like two blocks from my house. I just, I don't know. I liked how it sounded. It fit really nice, so I put it right in. <laughs> this song, when I wrote it, it was definitely very, very much inspired by Childish Gambino. Kind of like how he does his talking flow in, I think it's Bed Piece with Janie Aiko. So the second to last track is Cost of Love. Cost of Love is basically fully opening up at the end that Knack, aka the lonely ghoul of this project, is this type of person because of a heartbreak relationship Aww. and getting his heart broken by someone that he thought loved him but really was only in it for money and that aspect of it. Basically getting his heart broken by the quote-unquote rich girl type. When I made this song, I remember being very excited on kind of like how corny the hook was and the fake deepness of the hook just to play on like love, money. I was very happy when I finished this song and I thought it was going to be the girl hit of the project but it ended up not being soft Lock actually became the girl hit of the project, which I understand, but I thought this one had more potential and it ended up kind of flatlining. Last but not least, and probably to this day, my hardest track to release, which is track number 13, I Am Error. This is the title track. It is the final track, the saddest track. <laughs> so like I said in the beginning, that the intro plays that Alan Watts speech on love. This continues that speech and shows that the intro where Alan Watts is talking is actually about love and not about the risk of a new journey. And during this track, you can also hear Knack repeating the phrase I am error with the tone it's not kind of being like I am an issue I am a problem I am error like I'm the malfunction in this world as the track goes after the first hook there's a digital voice uh, you can hear in the background that plays all the way until the end. This voice is a speech-to-text program that I had on my computer at the time of making the project and it's reading my suicide note and during the the creation of I Am Error, an incident happened where I wrote this note out and yeah, um, I wanted to be vulnerable with this project and for the longest time I had the hook, I had basically the song mapped out but no verses. I tried writing verses to it, I tried putting other speech to text things in it, maybe, continue, maybe finding another Alan Watts speech and nothing fit or made sense to me until I put the note in and it just it clicked and I think it's such a staple to my career that my first major release has this type of attachment to it yeah with that being said <laughs> because this outro was so hard-hitting 
and vulnerable for me. The intro and the outro I handled. I did the production for, I did the mixing and mastering for, and even in my friends group, I didn't show anyone the outro until the actual release of the project. Also within the outro, near the end of it, you can hear this guitar pattern. I even did that guitar part. It's nothing special. And it's almost like a cry for help. But all the way at the end of the song, you hear the note stop. You can hear Nat kind of going to press the keyboard to turn keyboard to turn off the recording and then you hear this sound effect at the end this is actually another zelda sound effect this one though is the boss key sound effect and the idea of putting the boss key sound effect at the end of the project the very last notes sound you hear off i am error being the boss key was the idea of knack unlocking his heart to the world and also being that the boss key is the key to success and that this is going to open doors in my music career <laughs> Now that we got the track by track breakdown out of the way, there is a little bit more I want to talk about that comes with I Am Error. So first off, I released this project on November 22nd, 2019. So I hosted a listening party at Danny Clinch's gallery in Asbury Park. This is the first time I had an event like this. I never played a concert. I never did a big listening party like this. Any other mixtape I released in the past, I had listening parties in my basement. So this is a big deal. Pretty big event. Um, it was the first time I sold this merch. Uh, not this actual shirt i ended up customizing this one but it was a black t-shirt with the words i am error going cross and across and then on the back has the 8-bit knack logo and then also at the event um i got wasted 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 if you've been a fan and you follow different interviews i do i've, I've talked about this event over on the stanley cup podcast episode one but the short version of it is i was so nervous to play this project for my friends and my friends and family and even strangers that came and stopped in to be like what's going on over there um then i ended up getting completely drunk and as the project was closing out i knew i had to do a speech to thank everyone and be like hey thanks for coming out so i got wasted i did the speech wasted and then after that i went out drinking again had a beer and immediately was called my sister and was like you have to come get me like i'm breaking down um so it was a very emotional night through and through but even Years later, I do want to say thank you to everyone that came out to the event. It meant so much to me to see from there at that point who loved and supported what I was doing with my music and just my art in general. Oh my god, we might have audio problems too now. Jesus Christ, this video is going down the ship. Let's now talk about what happened after I Am Error, what I take from the experience, what I learned from it after the release, and how it furthered my music career to where it is now. I Am Error, it didn't blow up, it didn't go viral, I didn't make a ton of money, I barely made any money off of it after considering cost of instrumentals, time, mixing and mastering, the event, all that stuff, merchandise. The main, the couple things I did take away from it is uh, since I Am Error, I kind of dropped the horrorcore style. I don't really talk about eating people or killing people, just mainly talk about killing myself and um, my truths and more of like mental. I kind of stuck away from the ghoulish stuff and stuck more with the loneliness stuff. Since I'm ever released though, even to this day, anytime someone asks me in interviews or just in general, how long have I been doing music and stuff, I always go back to November 22nd, 2019 being the first major steps and basically my actual jump off point of taking music seriously and doing something with my passion and my art. After I'm ever released, I was very excited to do shows and concerts. I ended up doing none with this project. Um, I didn't get to do a tour with it or do any shows or open up for any artists because this came out in November 2019. So if you knew what happened following a couple months, you would understand. No one was really doing shows. With that being said, I did do some music videos during this time. I did a music video for More Demons. We also did a music video for Dead Inside. We also, or I also did COVID concert that I was able to film to kind of help promote this project and the songs that came off of it and also songs we were working on past this. There is 20 minute video I do have on this channel, on my YouTube channel called Making, Making of I Am Error. It's more just like random clips from that time period of recording and making 
the project, you'll see kind of like the people I have around and the energy. It's not a documentary as One More Time was with the making of Camp Limbic. It's just random footage I had from the time period of when I was making I Am Error. Um, for the one year anniversary of I Am Error, I did release three tracks that were bonus tracks. One of them was The Family. This track was actually supposed to feature my two friends, Jamesy and Nemo. We were never able to really kind of got around to getting both them on it and getting finalized verses and everything. So as a one year anniversary, I decided, you know what, let me just release it because in the behind the scenes footage, you see me work on it. And this is supposed to be on the album. It was going to be probably where Silent was, maybe track number three or four, but ended up not being on it, but still got released through my YouTube channel. Another track that I released as a bonus was Man Down. This was not going to be on I Am Error. This was around the time that I was making I Am Error, probably a little bit after when the recording was done. It was more of a writing exercise of just kind of like writing without stopping. I showed it to a couple of people before releasing it and everyone fucked with it. So I was like, I fuck with it. I'm gonna drop it as a YouTube exclusive for the one year anniversary of I Am Error. The last bonus track I did have for I Am Error was Behind Red Eyes. This was gonna go on the project. This was gonna be near the end of the project. It never became, was put on the project officially because I couldn't like fully finish it and I could never get happy with some of the verses and how they were sounding. Even though I liked it, I just couldn't fully commit to putting it on the project or even sending it out to get officially mixed. So I ended up just saying, fuck it, one year anniversary. Here you go, YouTube exclusive. And yeah, that's what you got today. To close this video out, I do want to say thank you to anyone that made it this far into the video, and also thank you to anyone that has been with me since the I Am Era days of my music career. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. I have so much more work coming out. I'm actually going to try to do this type of video for all my major releases. The next one will be for the Midnight Album, which is one of my favorite projects I wrote, one of my hardest projects I made, also my most successful project I made so far. Again, thank you all so much much for watching this video this long. I Am Error was such a big deal for me at the time. It was the first time I really felt confident in my music enough to show it to people and be like, I made this. This is who I am. This is Knack. So the fact that this many years later, um, I can go back to it and still feel confident in it and happy with the project as it stands uh, means so much to me. It's crazy that it's only been three years and it feels like it's so far away and the, how much I've grown and learned since I Am Error is remarkable. I hope you all enjoyed this video, me breaking down the project, giving out little stories and little Easter eggs along the way. And thank you so much. And of course, be safe. Good evening and welcome to Local 58.